Do you think, Doctor Doctor Hugh Lobner, do you do you find that over the twenty three years that you've seen a progression in artificial intelligence? Of, 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 sorry, go on. Oh, I would I would say that I think the uh, quality of the responses has greatly re increased. Quite honestly, um, the first the first entries were simply uh, well, they were abysmal, but. A few years ago, I, five or six years ago, in the screening process, I started an, asking questions that required some sort of knowledge, like what is 3.3 plus 2, or if A is bigger than B and B is bigger than C, how do A and C relate? And the program able to answer those questions correctly. So to that extent, they are ex this, you know, describing uh, or exhibiting some sort of intelligence. And as you see, the um, as time goes on, the, the uh, scripts behind the chatbots have a more extensive range of knowledge also. So the answer is yes. And do you, have you found any sort of um, reluctance from the part of the public for these kind of competitions that are encouraging artificial intelligence? A lot of people are scared of it. I haven't. No, um, not really, as a matter of fact. Uh, most people seem to be blithely unaware of it. <laughs> to yeah. Be quite honest. It's not as if it's the... Uh, you know, it's, it's, I mean Watson. They knew about Watson, you know, with uh, IBM, and they knew about Kasparov and uh, Deep, whatever, Deep, Deep Blue. Mm -hmm. Deep Blue. But the Loebner Prize is not uh, sort of that uh, popularity. So I don't think there has been much uh, negative feedback from the from the public. It does seem to be an interesting time, though, because a lot of people. I've I've noticed. I read, for example, one of your former judges, uh, Dr. Kevin Warwick of oh. uh, Reading University. Uh, who developed an artificial cat. He actually wasn't allowed a ticket on a British Airways flight because they didn't allow animals in the cabin. That's how realistic, supposedly, <laughs> his cat looked. Um, right. And also, he has a robot uh, that uh, you have to be 18 years old to, um, to meet, which is interesting as well. Are, we, are you finding that the development of AI is now expanding in ways that we hadn't quite foretold? Well, yes. I, I mean, a few years ago, I booked a... Uh, a train ticket on Amtrak, and their their chatbot Julie uh, so, sounded so perky and knowledgeable. I wanted to ask her for a date. I mean, it was really quite a, you know she knew what was going on. I was able to make the ticket reservation without any problem. So to that extent, in terms of um, agents for commercial sites, they're becoming uh, a lot better in terms of just speech recognition, pattern recognition. There's a, a there is an advance going on. Yes. Okay, well, we've got, we've got another question here from Mitsuku. This one's more of a medical question, I'm guessing. It's from SLS Guru 2000 Why am I tired after a long sleep? If you don't mind, Dr. Wallace, putting that in. Why am I tired after a long sleep? The reason is due to my mental model of you as a client. The reason is due to my... Perhaps not an accurate uh, response to this question. No, on that one, it, it, I don't think it, made, it knew what, what am I tired. Uh, sorry, why am I tired? So it's just answered, why am I? Like, why am I your friend? Why am I here? It's just yes. a, a generic answer to that one. It's but now I've seen that one, I can include it, ready for uh, Saturday. <laughs> and is that, is that how it works? You, you have lots of questions. That's exactly how it works. But the biggest thing that we can have is chat logs, things like this, where people are speaking to it, asking it questions. And it's, it's always a case of refining the, the answers. It's never a sort of a finished product. There's always something new coming in. And transcripts like these and the ones that uh, the judges providing the Loebner Prize are absolutely ideal for uh, refining and fine tuning these things. And then hopefully one day it may pass as a human. Is that the same for you, uh, Bruce? Is that the same method? You just input as many questions as possible? Um, a bit different because while we do, do input stuff, it's not just questions. We're trying to have a conversation in our testing. Yes. So yeah. we'd make statements. We'd, we'd see if it would carry the flow of what's going on. It's a conversation as opposed to merely questions. Okay. And is, are there any sort of, um, let's say, with the questions themselves, if you go on websites such as um, Google Answers and so on. Is there a way of inputting questions that have been crowdsourced mass scale from the internet that can just feed right into these bots? It depends on the bot. In the case of the ones that are competing in the in this Saturday, they're all 
effectively scripted bots, which means you have to hand craft the answers. So there's no, you can get all the questions, but you only have a certain amount of time in which to program specific answers. Whereas a different bot would simply memorize everything that's ever been said to it, and then have to try and find an answer in that collection. Many of our bots can access other information sources on the web for uh, answers. So, um, for example, there are sites such as uh, Answers.com or um, True Knowledge or Wolfram Alpha, which can provide natural language answers to questions. And um, the chatbots on web pages or in our mobile apps can access those, uh, those external information sources. But one of the rules of the Loebner contest is the no telecommunications rule, which means that we're completely cut off from the internet uh, during the contest. And that's done to prevent cheating in the contest. But uh, in that case, it limits the bot to just the knowledge that is contained on the local computer here at the contest site. Right. I was afraid that out in uh, the cloud somewhere, instead of a Another information source would somebody would be somebody in his basement, you know, typing in the answers, and I it was beyond my techni technical capability certainly to monitor that. Do you all the four of you communicate with each other about advancement in technology, or are we is this almost uh, kind of sort of WWF style fight breakout here on today's <laughs> Google Hangout? Is it are you all friends, or is this rivalry at its highest? Well, we're all well, friends, but we're using different technologies, so advances made on one side are not. Immediately, I mean, can't necessarily be used on the other. Immediately, anyway. Okay. I've noticed that um, there's a website, chatbots.org, I guess it is, and there's a lot of uh, assistance that each of the uh, bot masters provide for the others. It's uh, re a remarkably generous provision of advice and suggestions. Don't yeah. you find that you oh yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you know, they say, well, I can't do this. Well, have you tried this? And uh, Bruce does a lot of that. I, I've noticed that Bruce has been answering a lot of questions on how to use uh, what yours is uh, not uh, IML. You're using ChatScript. ChatScript, yeah. Yeah, and there, you know, how to answer questions and how to um, work around a particular problem. I, I don't, I don't do any chatbots, so I just skip over it. Uh, I just, you know, perceive this, not use it myself. But it seems to be very, very generous. That's what I would say. And how about yourself, Dr. Wallace? You Pandora bots, obviously creating lots of chat bots. You have an whole army of them. Is, is it? Uh, what, what's the latest developments for you? Well, as I mentioned, we're, um, we've developed some phone apps. Um, the phone apps are um, you can find them on the uh, on the uh, Google Play Store under the name Call Mom. And the reason we selected that name Call Mom is because by looking at the conversation logs of uh, chats that people have with these apps. We determined that the most common command people give the phone app to actually do something with their device is call mom. Uh, there's a UK version called call mom, by the way. <laughs> That's that. Well, j just quickly on the on the names front, uh, I've noticed that most of these chatbots seem to have female names: Rosette, Suzette, Mitsuku, Rose. Is that is that a uh, a common thing for chatbots? Are there any male chatbots? Well, two out of the four finalists this year are. Um, our male, which is a tutor, the um, the bot which is designed for practicing English as a second language, and uh, Izar, which is an alien life form, which I think is intended to be a male character.